follow the second part of the talk by Peter Shenzhen. So please, Peter. Okay. Welcome everybody in the audience to the second part of my talk. In the first part of my talk, I made uh, some introductory comments about what I called grandfathers. That means I mentioned the name of Czech, Kosovo, and Macaulay. In particular, in particular, Macaulay, besides of uh, Hilbert, is at least to me one of the grandfathers for the commutative algebra I'm interested in. Okay, uh, let me continue with my talk. I cannot repeat any detail, but I want to start with a few recalls. I uh, mentioned first that I'm working with a commutative ring, not necessarily in the theory. M is an R module, not necessarily finitely generated, and I is an ideal, X an element, and with X underlined, I denote a system of elements, and X and Y are usually complexes. And in the first part of my talk, I constructed for a single element a complex of three modules, which gives the resolution of the Czech complex in one element. And I defined this complex Lx of x as a tensor product. And for a system of elements, I defined inductively this complex and I denoted Lx of x as a tensor product. And as a summary of my, uh, as the first part of my talk, I get quasi-isomorphisms uh, between these three complexes. And moreover, uh, check Lx and Lx are both complexes of three modules, quasi-isomorphic, and a free resolutions of the Czech complex with respect to the system of elements given uh, by x1 up to xk. Okay, for some elements in R, uh, I denote, underline u, the same number of variables as k uh, variables over R. And I uh, denoted by ru the polynomial ring in these variables. And I used this notation for the system of inverse polynomials over R introduced by Macaulay and uh, look at the first part of my talk for the definition in a single element and it is easy to extend it uh, to several uh, variables. Okay, moreover with underline x minus underline u, I defined this sequence of elements, this is a mixture of elements of uh, the ring and the polynomials in the polynomial ring. And uh, for an R complex, I defined this notation, first of all the polynomial complex over U as a tensor product, the uh, com complex of inverse polynomials as this tensor product, and I have this isomorphism for the <coughs> a formal power series complex over x. Okay, these are the basic notations. And in the first part, I give an isomorphism of the homomorphism of this free resolution of the Czech complex with respect to x and the causal complex with respect to system of elements I defined before and the formal, po uh, formal power series complex. And I den denoted the homology as the Czech homology with respect to X. Why I call it Czech homology? Because this is the resolution of uh, the Czech complex and the homomorphism in the first part uh, represents quasi-isomorphisms in the second part only for complexes of three modules, so uh, the Czech complex is a complex of flat modules, and uh, therefore it doesn't uh, uh, define quasi isomorphisms in the second place. Okay, and moreover, I looked for the tensor product, 
this is a quasi-isomorphism to the Czech complex, and I find out that this is quasi-isomorphic to the Czech complex, uh, sorry, to the causal complex uh, of the sequence with respect to the uh, complex of inverse polynomials, and I called the homology the Czech uh, cohomology of X with respect to X. Okay, and uh, in general, it is not so easy to describe either Czech homolo uh, homology nor Czech cohomology, and for this, I use the notion of M weekly pro regular sequence if uh, this natural map between the causal complexes uh, of the system of elements generated by the powers of M to the system of elements generated by the powers of N is zero. For each N, uh, there is an M with this property. Okay. And I called X weekly pro regular. It is, in fact, are weakly pro-regular. That means it is pro-regular with respect to the basic ring, and I call A the ideal generated by it. What are the results here? If I have a weakly pro-regular sequence, this uh, Czech cohomology, which I can express as a, uh, as a causal cohomology, is isomorphic to the local cohomology with respect to the ideal A. This was one of the main results of the first talk. The second main result I mentioned, that the left derived functor of the completion, which is isomorphic under the assumption that I have a weekly pro-regular sequence to the Czech homology, and by the above result, it is isomorphic to the uh, causal homology with respect to the formal power series module. Okay. This was the basic stuff. Now let me continue with an example. Namely, uh, I take uh, R, the formal power series ring in one variable X, and S, uh, the direct pro uh, product of R mod X to the N. And one can see immediately uh, that R is of bounded X torsion because it is in the series and any ideal is of uh, bounded torsion. And I have the following ring homomorphism, R to S, where I send an element uh, of the ring to this element R plus X to the N uh, as an element of S. Okay, what do I know? S is an, as an R module, it is X adic complete because it is a direct product of complete modules. These modules are finite length, so they are always complete. Okay, and that means because I'm in an Ethereum ring and I have here a module, the Czech homology given in this way is zero for all non zero i, and because it is complete. The zero homology is isomorphic to S. This comes because of the former, former results, which I have mentioned here. Okay? This gives a conclusion. I'm in an Ethereum ring, X is weakly pro regular, and then I have uh, this information. Okay, now it is easy to see that I have a change of ring uh, theorem, namely the homomorphism with respect to R and Lx are isomorphic to the homomorphism uh, with S and Lx, where X is an image of X in S. Okay, but now, because of this isomorphism, I have also that the Czech uh, homology of S is zero for positive I and for zero it is S. But on the other side, S is of course not of pounded extortion. This is immediately to see because uh, no power uh, of X will vanish. Okay, this is an interesting example, uh, which, uh, by the way, has to do with another characterization of uh, pro-regular sequences uh, that is not completely fitted out at the moment. Okay, let me mention a few applications of our uh, results, namely, 
As before, I have a sequence, the idea is generated by it, an MR module. I have uh, the completion of R, which I denote also by R hat uh, A, has an RU module structure. Uh, namely, it follows that I, if I map a, a formal power series, oh, I forgot here the underlying U, sorry. Uh, if this is, can be mapped to R hat U by taking the formal power series running in U to this formal power series in the axis. And this is in fact a, a homomorphism to R hat A, as we have seen before in the case of a single element. So what I have for the causal homology, the zeroes causal homology here is, of course, uh, mod out the module of formal power series ring, and I have a natural map to this completion of M with respect to A. And it is injective if and only if the first uh, derived limit of the in, uh, uh, first derived functor of the inverse limit of the sequence is zero. And if X is M weakly pro-regular, so I have the vanishing of all this cohomology for positive I. Okay. And if X is weakly pro-regular, then I have that the left derived functor of the completion with respect to M is given by this tor respectively dually by this X module, where uh, this completion is viewed as an RU module by the above uh, definition. Okay, let me mention uh, a short uh, argument for the proof. Uh, I have here, this is in fact given uh, by the causal homology of this causal complex. And this is isomorphic to the tensor product of the causal complex with respect to the formal power series of U and M U. But now, uh, this causal complex is an R3 resolution of this module. And because, it's, because X is weakly pro-regular, this is isomorphic uh, to A. And this is, in fact, the homology in positive degree vanishes here. Okay. So this is one result we can describe. This is in some sense also new. We can describe the left derived functors of the completion a certain uh, Tor or X module. And the second isomorphism comes because of the duality because uh, of uh, the causal complexes. Okay. Another application is the following. I have again a sequence and an R module and R has also the structure of an RU module. And if I mod out RU by the sequence, I get the isomorphism to R. This is easy to see. And I have a result about the causal cohomology, namely this causal cohomology with respect to the inverse uh, uh, polynomial over M is given in this way. This is by definition. And this is nothing else but the section functor of M with respect to A. Okay. And on the other side, I can give an expression of the higher causal uh, homology, again, as a certain X module in this way, where the module, uh, where the ring R is considered as an RU module by this ob uh, observation. And I have also the duality to the torus. And if it's X is weakly pro-regular, I get the local cohomology as an expression of X respectively tor. And this is also another new result coming out from the inspection of the causal complexes. Let me give a short indication of the proof. This causal complex, which gives, in the case X is M weakly pro-regular, the local cohomology is a tensor product of this causal complex with respect to the module of formal power series uh, of the module of inverse polynomials. And this is in fact a free resolution of R because this is in fact a regular sequence on the polynomial uh, uh, ring in U. Okay. So this is uh, 
a first application. Let me now say something about duality. And again, I have a sequence, the ideal and X and uh, Y are R complexes. Let me repeat some dualities of the ordinary causal complex. The causal complex is, order, uh, is uh, isomorphic to the causal core complex with a certain shift. And I have also this uh, observation that the causal core complex comes from homomorphism of the causal complex with respect to X and the complex X. Okay, and the same dually. Okay, now I have a first duality result. Namely, uh, the causal complex with respect to the uh, complex of uh, formal power series is isomorphic to the dual of the causal co-complex with respect to the inverse polynomials of R and X. Okay, this is in fact, maybe uh, you might feel this a bit artificial, but it has a, another con uh, a very interesting consequence, namely, if X is weakly pro-regular, then we have here the left so as, as a cohomology, the left derived functors of the completion. And here we have the uh, homology, the local cohomology of uh, R with respect to the ideal generated by uh, X. And in some sense, I, want, I do not want to say anything about uh, derived category and uh, derived uh, functors in the uh, derived category. But this gives an isomorphism in the category of the left-derived functor of the completion of X to this one. Okay, for people who want to work with this, can use this uh, as a down-to-earth uh, description of this isomorphism in the derived category. Okay, and as an application, let me mention something like, which I want to called co-local duality. Let Rm uh, be a local Gorenstein ring. That means, in particular, it is a local Noetherian ring. And then it comes out by the inspection of uh, this isomorphism that the i's left-derived functor of the i's uh, of the completion of i's left-derived functor of the completion with respect to m is isomorphic to this one. This has to do because in the case of a Goldstein ring and the maximal ideal, we have that this is isomorphic to the uh, injective hall of the residual field sitting in degree D. And so this gives this isomorphism. Okay, uh, recall the following. This is another expression of the local uh, duality. We have that the local uh, cohomology with respect to M and X is given as this tor that follows in a similar way as I've been mentioned a, a little bit later. And you might see that this isomorphism by taking the metalist dual gives us X and this is a classical version of the local duality theorem as it is known uh, several years uh, by the work of Croton Dick. And so we can see, think of this in some sense as a co-local duality for Gorenstein rings with respect to the completion. Okay, there's another duality result, which is a generalization of the previous one. One, describe, one can describe this isomorphism. This comes out easily by uh, the duality of causal complexes and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, some associativity formulas. Uh, and again, if I have a weakly pro-regular sequence, then here I have the right derived functor of HOM with the right derived functor of the completion of X. And here I have the left derived functor of the uh, uh, completion and this is homomorphism set. Okay. Again, as before, if you are not interested in working uh, in derived categories, you can use this as a substitute uh, and you will have explicit isomorphisms. Okay, 
And a third duality, by the way, this is uh, in some sense uh, well known. It was proved by uh, Anne Marie Simon and other peoples also before. But uh, this interpretation here as causal homology seems to be new. And we have a third duality result. Uh, let me come back again. We have a uh, HOM X and here's this causal complex. And this is again the HOM of this causal complex in the first place with respect to the uh, uh, inverse uh, polynomial. Sorry, the minus one should be inside. And uh, so why? Okay, if I have weekly pro regular sequence, this gives another interpretation of this isomorphism in the derived category. Okay, finally, a false duality. Here I have to assume that the homology of the complex is finitely generated for all i. And in this case, I uh, have this isomorphism, the causal co-complex, with respect to this module of inverse polynomials is given in this way as a homomorphism of X with respect to the causal co-complex with respect to the inverse polynomials in Y. Okay, how can I prove that? Uh, one can reduce it to the case of X, the ring, and then it is isomorphic, and then it requires some technical details to go on uh, for any complex uh, which finitely generated Formology. Okay, again, if X is weakly pro regular, then I have this isomorphism, which is known at least since uh, Robin Hartshaw's lecture notes, residues and duality. Okay, so in some sense, this description of uh, local cohomology and derived functors of the completions uh, gives some down to earth description of some results in the GI category. Okay. Now, let me come to the notion of pro-regular sequences. Before, I was talking only about weakly pro-regular sequences. And I uh, want to explain a little bit the history of uh, this notion and the controversy about it. OK, first of all, uh, Green, Lees, and May in the famous paper, let me mention it, uh, in the, it was published in 1992, and uh, it is, was in some sense the first uh, uh, paper about uh, left-derived functors of completion. And afterwards, we had the paper by Anne-Marie Simon, published in the Proceedings of Cambridge Philosophical Society. And uh, Greenleys and May, they introduced the notion that the sequence is M pro regular. And that means for each i from 1 to k, the in, this inverse system, where the, direct, uh, where the inverse uh, map is given by multiplication with, by x, is pro zero. That means for all n, there exists an n because n are equal to n, such that this containment relation is fulfilled. And they used it uh, uh, in, the, uh, in a rather tricky and very interesting way, uh, using some spectral sequences for uh, inverse limits in order to get something about uh, left derived functors of completion. Okay. And on the other side, uh, in the paper by uh, Lipman, uh, Alonso Tario and Jer Jeremia Lopez about local homogeneity and cohomology of schemes, uh, they introduced this version of M pro regular. They called a system M pro regular if for each one to K, the inverse system with the, given by the map is zero. You might see the difference. I have here the complete power and I have here the power uh, of the generating elements. And that means that uh, this sequence is pro zero if for each n there exists an m 
with this containment relation. This is easy to see by the definition of procedural. Lippmann and his uh, co-workers used this notion uh, for the study of causal complexes. But unfortunately, the, uh, the previous definition too, this definition doesn't full, uh, satisfy all the requirements of the paper in one. So that means there is a correction uh, uh, given by Lippmann and his co-workers. Uh, and uh, they suggest the definition of both uh, weakly pro-regular sequences. Uh, this was given in uh, the paper too. And pro-regular sequences are not permutable. This is true for both uh, weakly pro-regular sequences. It's easy to say because causal complexes uh, have the property that uh, you can uh, permutate uh, uh, the generating set. Okay, pro-regular sequences are in general not weakly pro-regular. Uh, pro and so it came down that most of the results of the paper by Lippmann and his co-workers uh, has to modify for weakly pro-regular sequences. A first systematic study of what weakly pro-regular sequences uh, is given in my paper in uh, Mathematica Scandinavica. I will come to this uh, back a little bit later. Okay, let me mention the example by Lippmann. Uh, you can define R, the direct program of Z mod 2 to the n set, and take uh, T, the element T of this kind. Then you see that the, L, uh, the sequence 1 T is pro-regular, because if you mod out 1, you get 0, while this is not, uh, uh, is not uh, pro-regular. This is easy to see, because you have no uh, bounded torsion at all. Uh, it follows that this sequence 1t is not weakly pro-regular. Okay, so that means uh, it is necessary to distinguish be uh, between the two definitions of weakly pro-regular and pro-regularity. Let me continue with a few results about pro-regular sequences. Uh, if you have a sequence, then of course, if it is regular, m-regular or m-quasi-regular, if you like, then it is also pro-regular and weakly pro-regular. Uh, as we have seen before, the converse is not true. Uh, in the following, I find out a homological characterization of pro-regular sequences. To this end, I define uh, underline xi, uh, the sequence generated by the first i minus one elements. And then the following is equivalent. Namely, the, the sequence is pro-regular. Uh, it is pro-regular for any flat R module F. This is easy to see because uh, uh, flatness uh, uh, commutes with this colon ideals. And this is interesting. I have a homological characterization of the following uh, kind. The first Czech homology with respect to Xi of uh, the torsion of Mi with respect to the previous I minus one elements is zero for any injective R module I. Okay. And moreover, if I look for this module, this is a subsequent factoring out of the torsion with respect to the uh, first I min I minus one elements and the uh, first I elements. This is X I divisible for I from one to K for any injective R module. You might remember one result of uh, the first part of my talk where I described when a module is of bounded X torsion. This is equivalent that X is M pro-regular and X is M weakly pro-regular. Uh, so you might see this as a generalization of the previous characterization of uh, 
when an element x, uh, when m is x, power, uh, x uh, of pounded x torsion for a given element. Okay. Uh, but now we have a, the following corollary. Uh, as, a denotion, uh, as a notation, I introduce x to bar n as a powers, uh, as a sequence of powers for any k double uh, of positive integers. Then the following conditions are equivalent. X is pro-regular. Uh, there is an n-couple, so that, such that uh, this sequence is pro-regular. And this is pro-regular for all n-tuples. Okay, this comes out by the homological characterization here, because this does not depend on the powers uh, of the elements. The torsion is, uh, because it is a finitely generated ideal, the torsion is independent if I take the powers here and the same here. Okay, uh, for me it was a little bit surprising. Let me come back to some further local conditions. Before I do that, let me remember that an M regular sequence is weakly pro-regular, it is pro-regular, uh, so this is nothing new. But the following is of some interest, and if I will, uh, we will see some applications in the, uh, at the end of all. I take an M regular sequence and Y an element, and I assume that uh, this module, where I mod out the regular sequences of bounded Y torsion, uh, as an assumption, and this is equivalent to the fact that the enlarged sequence of x by y is m pro-regular. Uh, so in some sense, in general, uh, not any pro-regular sequence uh, is uh, uh, regular, but here we have a, a description which I will uh, need a little bit later. And the proof is uh, by induction, it will be enough to show that for any power uh, of the system is of bounded y torsion. And I make an induction on m. I have this short exact sequence because I have a regular sequence. Uh, this module is isomorphic to a finite direct sum of m mod x. And I have this, uh, the rest of this sequence. Okay. And uh, if this is of bounded y torsion and this is of bounded y torsion, I conclude that this is of bounded y torsion too. And then it gives me that this is in fact a pro-regular sequence by the characterization I gave above. Okay. Uh, and the converse is easy. For all m, there exists an n with this property. Uh, that this is contained, and this is contained in m divided by n for m minus n bigger than or equal to n, and so it follows that if it is <coughs> uh, pro-regular, then it's, this module is of bounded torsion. Okay, uh, let's go on. Uh, I need some, for the rest of my talk, I need some further notation. For an element in the ring, I define D of F, the complement of the variety of F. That means the set of prime ideals that do not contain F. Okay. And the spectrum is the union of all of this DF, where F uh, contains to R. And this is, the spectrum is quasi-compact. That means uh, I have a uh, uh, union of finitely many of these Ds giving the spectrum for some elements of R. And I call this a covariance sequence. If uh, this is true, and this is equivalent to say that the sequence of elements F generates a unit ideal. Okay. When I have a covering sequence, 
I have this natural map for any module. I take the natural image of M to the localization in each for each Fi. And it is easy to see that if F is a covering sequence, then this natural map is injective. This is a fact which I will uh, use a little bit later also. And for a sequence of elements, I use the notation X uh, underline over one as a sequence of the elements in any localization of R. Okay. Uh, I have a covering sequence and X uh, any sequence. And I want to give a local characterization of weakly pro-regular respectively pro-regular. Okay, this, uh, this characterization is given on one sense for weakly pro-regular, respectively for pro-regular. Okay. And this is a local condition. This is weakly pro-regular, respectively for all localizations in this covering sequence. And the same is true for all localizations with respect to the any prime ideal, or it will be enough to take uh, the maximal ideals in the spectrum. Okay, what is the sketch of proof? It is uh, quite easy. I will uh, comment only the equivalence of the first two conditions. I have this commutative diagram for causal homology, and I have the natural map of this module into the direct sum of the localizations with respect to Fi, and this localization commutes with causal homology, and the same here. And because I have a, a F as a covering sequence, this is injective on both sides. And now if this map is zero, then this is map is zero, and if all of these maps here induced by the localizations are uh, zero, this is the same here, and the rest is more or less obvious. Okay, two more definitions. An ideal I is called an effective Cartier divisor if there is a covering sequence such that the localization for each element of the covering sequence is generated by a single element, which is a non-zero divisor in the localization for some Xi. Okay, uh, this is a note. Uh, this notation is uh, uh, borrowed from uh, algebraic geometry and uh, it's uh, transformed in uh, commutative algebra in this way. Okay, and this ideal I is called a Cartier. Uh, if it is a Cartier divisor and X is an element, this pair is called pro-regular if the inverse system is pro-zero. This is a motivation uh, of the no uh, notion of M pro-regularity as given above. Okay. That means for any N there is an M that this containment relation holds. Okay. Uh, and let me assume that R mod I, I have again a Cartier, uh, effective Cartier divisor, is a bounded X portion. Then the following is equivalent. Uh, by the definition, I have elements uh, in the ring, which with the property is that the localization of the uh, Cartier divisor is given by a single element. And uh, I have this, if this is pro-regular for any i from 1 to r, uh, this pair is pro-regular in the previous uh, definition. That means I have this containment relation for any n, there exists an m satisfying this containment relation. Okay. And on the other side, uh, this means if I take an injective R module and the torsion with respect to I, and I mod out the torsion with respect to I and X, that this is X 
divisible for any injective module. Or on the other side, uh, the first uh, Czech homology with respect to X of the torsion of I uh, vanishes for any injective module. Okay, let me say something about uh, the proof. If R mod I is of bounded X torsion, I can localize and uh, because of this localization, I find out that this is of bounded XRFI torsion uh, and XI over 1 is uh, uh, regular in this ring. What does it mean? This comes from the definition, uh, and I have here the bounded torsion mass, and then it comes out that XI over 1 the sequence consisting of xi over 1 and x over 1 is proregular. This comes from this result I mentioned before, namely I have a single element which is regular and an element is a property that this is of bounded torsion and then I conclude that this is proregular. Ah, sorry. Okay, and now I go on with a proof, namely, I have this commutative diagram. This is similar to a diagram I mentioned above. I take here this module, which describes proregularity of uh, the Cartier divisor, comma, uh, comma x, and here I have the localization. This map is a natural direct sum of the localization, and this is injective. And I have here this natural map, and this is commutative, and the same uh, injective here. And now if this is zero, then this is zero, and conversely, if this is zero for all i, I have zero here. Okay. Uh, for the second part, because I have some more uh, definitions, uh, I have here uh, the natural, this gives the natural map coming from here, because this is described the same map in terms of causal homology. And by duality, I can apply HOM and the injective module and, gives, and it gives me this map. And the, the limit of this map is just H1 uh, as a first Czech homology of the uh, torsion here, of this injective module. And if this map is zero, this limit is zero, and I have the vanishing here. And conversely, if uh, I can describe again the Czech uh, uh, cohomology in this term, and I have an injection in this module, and I'm looking for the composite of this map, and if the limit is zero, because of this injection, some, there is some m such, such that the composite of this map is zero, and that means nothing else, that this is zero, and that means this is uh, of bounded uh, torsion. Okay. Now, uh, let me come a little bit uh, to some recent work of uh, Watt and Scholze. This is uh, in some sense ongoing. And Watt and Scholze's uh, paper is published in uh, 2021. The prisons and prismatic cohomology. I'm not completely through with all of that, but uh, uh, let me start with the notation. I take a prime number and set B the localization at the prime uh, idea generated by P and R be a set P algebra. Okay, then uh, they called a pair uh, consisting of a ring, that means a delta ring. This has to do with some automorphisms. I will not go into all the details. It has to do that you can. Uh, uh, you can uh, take uh, uh, extend the uh, 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 Frobenius map of R mod P to R itself. And I have a Cartier divisor. 
ion R satisfying the following conditions. R is P A adic complete, and I have that P is contained in the Frobenius lift that is induced by this delta structure in this way. Okay, so this is a rather technical uh, detail, and at least for me, as a people from competitive algebra, it was completely new, and uh, now I'm trying to understand this a little bit better. But uh, the main theorem I have in mind is the following. I have a prism, and I suppose that I is a bounded P torsion. This notion here in the definition of a prism uh, that R is P I A D complete is not necessary for what uh, I want to say in the following. Then I have the following properties. Uh, this is pro-regular, and this module, for any injective R module, that is the torsion of uh, I with respect to I, modulus the torsion of I with respect to I, comma P, uh, is P uh, divisible. Or in other things, it means this torsion is given by the uh, P torsion of these two uh, 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 of these two uh, torsions of I. And moreover, the conditions in A and B are equivalent. Uh, this comes easily out by uh, this previous characterization uh, given here. Uh, I have the divisibility and uh, the pro-regularity in this way. Okay. <clears throat> and in fact, I want to say a bit more in the future, maybe about this construction. As I mentioned, this is uh, motivated by some number theoretic and P uh, Frobenius constructions that I'm starting to learn a, bit, a little bit better. Okay, I want to conclude with a final example, which uh, I like very much because of the following. Uh, namely, in the case of an Ethereum ring, we know that the torsion uh, of an injective module is again injective and so on. This follows by Metalis structure theorem. And I want to comment this a, bit, a little bit in general. To this end, I take a formal power series uh, ring in two variables over a field K. And I denote by E the injective hall of the residual field. Then I construct the idealization of R by E. That is, the S is nothing else but the direct sum of R and E. And the multiplicative structure is given in this way. I have some multiplication in the first component and the module multiplication in the second component. And this is, in fact, a uh, ring. And it was first, uh, for my uh, belief, it was first introduced by Nagata in his book, no, uh, Local Ring. And I take uh, uh, ball phase x, the element x, comma uh, zero in S. And what are the properties of uh, uh, S? Uh, this set of homomorphism is, in fact, an injective S module. This is well known. But, in fact, it is isomorphic to S. That means S is a self-injective ring that follows by a result of uh, called phase. And uh, it is not so difficult to see, but uh, if a ring, uh, if a, a commutative Neurian in a Neurian ring is self-injective, it is necessarily of dimension zero. Okay, this is no longer true uh, in the case of non-Neurian rings, and this is of course S is of course not an Neurian ring. Uh, the localization of X with respect to uh, bold X is not injective. Why is that true? It is easy to see that this localization uh, is isomorphic to the localization of R with respect to X. And this is a ring of dimension uh, 
one and it is not self-injective. And I'm looking for the Czech complex with respect to S in the single element capital S. And it comes out that the torsion of S with respect to S, this is isomorphic to the zero Czech homology of S, is the zero uh, direct sum of zero and E. And H1 is Rx modulo R direct sum with zero. And this is not zero. And moreover, S is not of bounded extortion as easily seen. Okay. Uh, let me say something about uh, the properties, some more properties. S is injective, but the torsion and S modulo the torsion are both not injective. Note that in the case of an Ethereum ring, this is uh, true. Uh, and for the proof, you might see that X acts injectively on this module. Because X is divisible, you can see it in the following way. You take an element here of S localized at X, and you can write it as this, where F is uh, of uh, S, and F, uh, F bar is of the torsion. And S X is uh, isomorphic to this quotient, as we have seen before. OK. So, uh, it acts injectively on this, uh, but because of this isomorphism, this is not injective, this cannot be injective too. And if this would be injective, it would be a direct sum of S, and it follows that this would be injective too, and this is not the case. Moreover, uh, the direct pro, uh, product over the naturals of S is an injective module, while the direct sum is uh, over S is not injective. Recall that uh, if a, a ring has a property that any direct sum of injectives is again injective, then it follows that this is an Ethereum ring, as uh, was shown by uh, Bass and independently by Pub. Uh, Why is that true? I have this short exact sequence for the localization and Sx is not injective. And if this module would be injective, it would be split exact. And then it would follow that this is injective too, but this is not the case. Okay, I'm at the end of my talk. Let me see. I have a few minutes more uh, left, but maybe we can use this for uh, further questions and comments about uh, the results. Moreover, I have uh, to say thank you to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present uh, my results here. And these results are, are not only my results. Uh, I thank also Anna-Marie Simon for a long cooperation about the subject that uh, leads to the book uh, by Springer and uh, some uh, other papers too. Okay, this is all for the moment. Thank you again. So, and thank you very much, Peter. So now, please, uh, you may have any question or comment on the two part or two day, two day part and for the second part. Yeah. Previous okay. Part. What is my uh, what was my great greatest insight? It was to see that local cohomology as well as left derived functors of uh, Czech uh, of uh, completions can be represented as Czech homology and uh, Czech cohomology as well as causal homology and Czech uh, and causal cohomology. This is the most important thing for me. Okay. Okay. If there are no question, let me 
uh, give a lot in, of men. In your talk, will... uh, when the sequence is weekly pro regular, you provide several ways to compute. So these uh, uh, they are equivalent. But if, yes. if the sequence is not uh, weekly pro regular, is, is there anything to. Yeah, the, the only thing I can say, uh, okay, what is the advantage of a weekly pro regularity? Uh, in general, uh, it is possible to express uh, Czech homology and Czech cohomology as causal homology and uh, Czech uh, and causal cohomology with respect to the formal power series module or with respect to the module of inverse polynomials. This is true for any sequence. Mm. But if the sequence is weakly proregular, I get the expression of local cohomology and left derived functors of completion. So for an Ethereum ring, you can always express local cohomology and left derived functors of com uh, completion in terms of Czech complex, respectively of uh, causal complexes. This is the main. Uh, ingredients of the talks I gave here. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question, Peter. So, yeah? Uh, are there properties of the rings which follow from vanishing of the left derived functors of completion of a module or, or a ring with respect to maximal ideal? Uh, okay. Uh, there are some particular results uh, characterizing Gorenstein and von Macaulay rings in terms of vanishing of the left derived functors of completion. Uh, in the book uh, with uh, Anne Marie Simon, you can find a few of them. Some more uh, I'm uh, preparing in another paper or, uh, where I give a characterization of von Macaulay rings in terms of the uh, left derived functors of completion in this dual way as you have it to uh, a characterization in terms of uh, the local cohomology there's a dual version of it okay yeah thank you so thank you if no more questions or remarks, so I propose to close uh, the presentation, the, the talk today. Thank you. Let us thank Peter for his nice talk. Uh, another comment uh, uh, to you, Gal. I will, uh, I will make a finally a presentation of my talk in a PDF file, and I will send it to you. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Okay. Okay. Then thanks to all of you, and I wish you all the best for the summer. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.